Uh, hey guys, do you remember a while back when I did a video all about how to free roam a Doberman in your house when I left Arlo, my Doberman, home alone for the very first time, completely unsupervised, in my house for a good chunk of the day? All right, Arlo. Buddy, this is the first time you're gonna be home alone this long. Hey, look at me, I'm trusting you. I want the house in the exact same condition when I come back, okay? Don't make me regret this, please. Please don't make me regret this. Exact same condition when I get back. Be a good boy. I hope this isn't a bad idea. Well, when I made that video, I was just deathly afraid of what I might come home to. You know, I didn't want to come home to a house that was just completely destroyed because Arlo decided to chew on absolutely everything he could get his mouth on. I'm a little bit nervous. Arlo? Oh God, no, what did he do? No, no, oh! Well, luckily it didn't turn out to be anything like that. And a big reason it didn't turn into a giant disaster was because I had previously trained Arlo on what he could chew on in the house and what he couldn't before I ever left him alone with free roam of the house. And that's what this video is gonna show you how to do with your dog right now. So let's get going. Okay, before we talk about the step-by-step -step on how to do this, it's really important we talk about probably the most important training theory around Dobermans that I know of, and that is the power of habit. Now dogs in general use this, but Dobermans specifically have such a strong habit forming tendency to them. It's incredibly strong and it's in one of the reasons why Dobermans are so insanely trainable. But where people get into trouble and why they still need help sometimes, even with the world's most, one of the world's most trainable dogs, is because they don't take advantage of the breed's natural instincts and apply those instincts to help them in the training process. That's when something that should be super easy to train them to do actually becomes incredibly difficult. And so just take advantage of this breed's natural instincts and you're gonna do super, super well. So what does this habit forming instinct actually mean and how do you utilize it? Well, essentially it just means you get your doberman to do what you want enough times over and over without distraction and eventually their instincts are gonna kick in, their habit forming instincts, and they'll kinda default to that action in the future just naturally. And you know, it's such a powerful tool to use during training. A lot of people ask me, you know, how is training a Doberman any different than training any other dogs? This is one of the primary ways, is utilizing this habit forming instinct in such an intense way. So how do you use this concept here? Well, quite simply, you avoid situations where your Doberman's gonna be chewing on things that they shouldn't, like a remote control, a kid's toy, or anything else, a piece of furniture, anything else that they shouldn't be chewing on. You interrupt that behavior as soon as you see it, as early as possible, so that you're not allowing that habit to form. Then you redirect them over to something they should be chewing on, praise them and let them go crazy on it, allowing that good behavior habit to form instead. You just do that enough times, your Dorman's natural instincts will take over from there and you'll be good to go. So let's talk about the step-by-step -step of applying this in action. Step one, make sure inappropriate temptations are put away. Just simply walk around the house, find any loose items, especially things on the ground like remote controls, kids' toys, things that they shouldn't be chewing on, and pick those up to remove those temptations away. Watch for socks and underwear. That's a big one for Dobermans for some reason that they can swallow those a lot and get some blockages. So quite simple, step one, reduce the negative temptations. Step two, provide plenty of good chewing options. Now leave them out on the floor where they can get to them. Toys that are different sizes, types, textures, uh, rubber toys, toys with little nubs, smooth toys, uh, nylabone type toys, uh, frozen things are great, even edible treats that they can go to town on, all those are great. The more uh, variety you have, the better. Because if your dog finds, let's say, a texture they really prefer, and they can only find that texture in your kid's toy, and you don't really have a dog toy for them that's available in that texture, then you're gonna have a problem. And they might start going to your kid's toy and they're gonna be breaking this good habit. You want them to be building this strong habit of chewing on good things. So as many, much variety as possible. Plush toys are great. I also really like the idea of wrapping their bed in a blanket. If they have a bed in a safe place, let's say in the common area, wrapping that in a blanket, that really satisfies, especially a young Doberman's urge to suckle on a blanket and hold onto it like a pacifier. 
The more options, the better here. Step three, hover over your dog and redirect as necessary. Now for at least the first two weeks while you're doing this technique, you're really gonna wanna hover a lot over your dog and not let him out of your sight because you're trying to build this habit from the beginning. So you can't have any early on slip ups. Those will really set you back. So you might even wanna have like a safe place in the common area of the house where you can put your dog kind of, you know, like a small pen, for example, a portable pen, like I talk about a lot on my channel. And in there, you can at least have a little break if you need to run off to the other room and do something, you gotta go to the bathroom or whatever, and you can't watch them. But for the first two weeks, they gotta kind of be under your constant supervision. If you see them start to go for a toy that they shouldn't be going for, interrupt their uh, action as quick as possible. I like to give a really sharp, like, ah, 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 and then a leave it command and then redirect him over to something that he should be chewing on and then praise and reward him. If I'm a little bit late and he actually sinks his teeth in, then I say, you know, I give him a drop it command, I have him drop it, I tell him no, a firm no, and I redirect him over to a good toy and give him the good feelings of yes, good boy. And with doing that, hopefully as consistently as possible, you're building this good habit. Now, if you catch something they chewed on after the fact because he left the room or whatever, that's on you. You shouldn't have been letting them out of your sight yet because you're still in the beginning process just building this up. Don't punish them later on, like an hour later or something, or half hour later after they've chewed on something. They're not gonna make that connection, but it shouldn't be happening because you should be really hovering at this early stage to form that strong habit. All right, this next step, step four, is where the rubber really meets the road. But before we get there real quick, I just wanna take a moment to please consider hitting that subscribe button down below if you're getting anything useful at all from my videos and the little bell icon next to it so you don't miss my videos in the future. I would really appreciate it. So let's jump in to step four. Step four, begin providing temptations as your trust grows for your dog. Okay, now, hopefully you've been through maybe two weeks or so uh, of really successful hovering over your dog in the house. They're not chewing on anything they shouldn't be. Uh, you have them separated when you gotta step away and that kind of thing. Now you can start to kind of test how much you can trust your dog. Start leaving out some tempting things for them down low where they can get at it, like a remote control, a kid's toy, a stuffed animal they shouldn't be chewing on, that kind of thing. And with you really supervising, so you're not developing any kind of bad habits because you're interrupting the bad habits before they occur, um, you can really just see how far you can go with this. And uh, if you do have to step away, maybe now instead of separating them in a pen, you just pick up all the temptations and you step away for a minute. You can start to kind of loosen it. Now, if there's any regression and your dog does chew on something they shouldn't, don't be afraid to backtrack a little bit and really hover some more, take the temptations away until they start to gain your trust again. Repeat this process and pretty soon you should be able to completely leave the house with them inside the house, the house a total mess, things on the ground and everywhere, especially if you've got kids, trust me, and not have to worry at all about your dog chewing anything that they shouldn't be. Now, the earlier you start this process, guys, the better. Now, I wouldn't expect to make a whole lot of progress until after your puppy is done with the teething stage, which is about six months of age. But after that, if you've been pretty consistent with this, your stress level should be able to just drop significantly because your dog's gonna be a lot more trusted in the house not to chew and destroy things. Um, but I wouldn't have full confidence until maybe one and a half or two years of age. I wanna give really realistic expectations for you. But by one and a half or two years of age, you should really be able to leave your house a total mess and trust that your Doberman's not gonna be chewing on anything that they shouldn't. Now, this is within reason, of course, right? You shouldn't leave out anything that could prove dangerous to your dog, and you're gonna to have to base it on your comfort level with your specific situation. But by one and a half, two years of age, your stress levels should be through the floor. Real quick, I do wanna talk about using chewing deterrent sprays. Now, these are things like bitter apple sprays, or there's some other formulas out there. Um, I don't really like them terribly much, but I do think they have their place. For example, if you have a piece of furniture that your dog is really zeroed in on and loves to chew on, and you have a hard time stopping them from that, that could be a great application for something like this, just to cover, there might be a weird scent on there or something like that. Put one of these repellent sprays on there sometimes does make a big difference. Uh, now, not every repellent or chewing deterrent spray works for every type of dog, so you might wanna test it out. Spray it on something as a test, Try to give it to your dog. If your dog chews it and ignores it, then that might not be good for you. But if uh, your dog instantly spits it out, then that might be a deterrent that does work for your dog. So guys, doing the things that I listed here today in combination with plenty of exercise, mental stimulation, and really just doing what you need to do to keep their anxiety to a minimum really should help you to get your dog to kind of be at a point where Arlo is now. Um, he's fully trusted with free roam in the house. We can leave the house a disaster with kids' toys everywhere all over the floor and fully trust that he's only gonna chew on his toys even if they're in the mix of all these other kids' toys. Um, you know, well, with Arlo anyway, the one weakness we see that he has is he's still 
fairly tempted with socks. So we do make an extra effort to make sure socks are off the floor, but otherwise he's fully trusted. So it's actually really nice to have our stress levels just come down and we don't have to worry about picking up every last little thing when we leave the house. I hope this isn't helpful for you guys. It really is such a mental relief once your dog is just fully trusted in your house without you and you'll get there soon. And you know, maturity has a lot to do with it as well. So if you have a really young Doberman, definitely just hang in there. Once the maturity catches up with everything and you've been consistent, it'll all click into place and everything is going to be fine. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, please uh, keep treating your Dobermans like just the wonderful dogs that they are. Um, I will see you again next week. And don't forget, there are resources available to help you out in the description below of all my videos. So take a look there and uh, see you next time, next week. All right, see you then.